Organizing and displaying complex data relationships can be quite a headache, but not with the hidden tree view control in Excel. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers. And today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna take the ultimate ERP and we're gonna build upon it an incredible tree view, complete with customers, invoices, icons, and filtering the data, printing selected data, check boxes, and a whole lot more. And we're gonna do it all from scratch, every step of the way. It's gonna be incredible training, I cannot wait. So let's get started. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic training. In this week's training, I'm gonna show you how to create one of those hidden, almost never used, but very powerful tree view features. And I'm gonna show you how you can build it into your own application. We're gonna be building this all by ourselves during the training. It's gonna have these icons in here. We're gonna be able to show you how to enable checkboxes. We are going to show you how you can also filter out your tree views. So we're gonna show you that. It's gonna be a really incredible training. And of course, I'm going to show you how you can create these order previews. Best of all, we can also print selected. If we want to print a selection of invoices, we can do that simply by clicking and selecting on those. It's going to automatically print those. And the best thing about this particular training, it is built on a preconceived application that we did a few weeks ago called the Ultimate ERP. So you may recognize this. It's got purchase orders, work orders, now invoices and dashboards and chart data and payroll and vendors. So you're going to get a real bonus this week, but we're going to focus just on our tree view and I'm going to show you how you can build it yourself. And of course, we are going to do it together. I create these trainings each and every Tuesday. If you have not subscribed yet, now is a perfect time to do that as I want to make sure you get alerted. So go ahead and click that notification icon bell. These trainings and this template is absolutely free. If you want this template, including this tree view and all the features associated with that, Go ahead and click on the link down below where it says download and I'll make sure to get this sent over to you right away. Just include your name and email and I'll get that sent over to you. Of course, everything is free, but if you want to support this channel, there are so many ways to do this. In fact, this tree view, there's so many more features that I can put in that and all those extra features are based on your suggestions and I create every single week. I create an additional video for our YouTube silver and Patreon members. So if you like these trainings and you want to support the channel for just a few a month, I'll make sure you get an additional training, an additional updated workbook based on your feature suggestions or any other fixes, or you may want me to focus on something. That's the feature fix or focus that I do every week for YouTube Silver and our Patreon. So that's a great way to support the channel. I hope you'll click the link down below for our Patreon and we'll see you over there. So let's continue with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be creating. Then we're going to create it from scratch together. Okay, so basically in this initial application we have our customers we have work orders we have invoices and they generate from this list this order list here so that's where the data resides so what i want to do is i want to create a relationship based on the customers or the vendors and i also want to show an icon and i want to be able to select on the individual invoices or work orders or whatever they might be. And then I want to display that as a preview here. And I want to also be able to enable checkboxes for the tree view, select on them, print them. And I also want to be able to filter. If I want to exclude work orders, I can select this checkbox. It's going to exclude those work orders. And now we see that only invoices and purchase orders are being displayed. So we've got a lot to cover, but it's not going to be a very long training compared to normal. So go ahead and grab your beverage of choice and we're going to get started right away so this is a user form we're going to be creating a brand new user form i'll use the same workbook we'll just create an additional user form then we're going to write the code together and i'm going to show you every bit so it's going to be a great training so we're going to get right into it okay if you do want to see this original erp just look up the ultimate erp i'll include the link down below for the original training okay it comes with a lot of different features like this but we're not going to get into that right now because i've got an entire video covering that okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to go into the developer if you don't have that developer you click customize the ribbon you can make sure you select the developer here however you can also just press alt f11 that's the ai tool pack you can pick that up as well i sell that uh visual basic is all you want to do alt f11 and what that's going to do is put you into the vba there's a lot of code here but don't you worry about that what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new module that's going to be for our code so we're going to click insert and module 
and then we're going to give it a name. What we want to do is click on the properties here, and I'll bring that over within view. And that module one, I'm going to change the name of it. I've got another module called Tree View, so let's just call it Training Tree View. Okay, so we now we've got Training Tree View, so this is the one we're going to be writing. We also want to create a brand new user form to do that. We can do a few things. We can click Insert, or we can right click here. Either way, Insert user form and i'm going to create a brand new user form now i want this a little bit bigger because we got to encompass it so let's make it about i'm going to change the height to about 530 here and uh, i want to change the width to about 930 here i want to make sure it's big enough so i think that was the idea so 930 okay so that's going to change the height and the width of the user form now i want to give this user form a name so we're going to call it orders tree view okay great and now what we want to do is we want to insert a toolbox now we have a the toolbox here which is going to come so what we need to do is select on the form and click on the toolbox now what we want to do is we want to tree view now this tree view control was not part of the original so what we'll do is we'll click additional if you don't have it most likely you don't i didn't have it additional controls and what we're going to do is you're going to look for tree view so we'll scroll down here and it's not the c tree view but what we want to do is we want to scroll down and when you find the microsoft tree view control you want to select that one now sometimes there's another feature that we will be using so you might want to select it as well and then it's called the list picture box so if we take a look inside it's actually right here called the microsoft image list now i don't have it selected but it is something that you may want to bring to your attention because there are ways of using this inside Side what we're going to do to store images so keep that in mind although it's not necessary for this training i just want to alert you microsoft image list control it will store certain images that you can use in your tree view okay so i'm going to keep it unselected okay so then what we you do is going to put this tree view on here like this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click it and i'm just going to draw a box right about here so that's going to be our tree view it's going to give us these sample nodes these are called nodes they're all individual nodes and this entire tree view is going to be programmed through vba now we can make several changes to it if we want to we can change the appearance we can change the name right we got tree view one if we want now i've got one so i'm going to call it tree view two just to make sure it doesn't uh get confused with the other tree view that i've created although they're on different forms so we're going to call it tree view two okay we can also change the appearance if we take a look here we can use a flat appearance or we can use the sunken appearance here and we can add check boxes here we can also do that through vba we can have a control tip whether it's enabled or disabled we can change the font we can increase the font and i'll probably do that here so i'm going to increase it to let's say about 11 just so we can see it nice uh, it's got it much clearer okay we can also change the font if we want to change it to a different style but i think tahoma is fine for us but of course we can change that here okay if we want to do a full row set we can set the height help height selection and uh, some more information such as changing the icon the pointer i don't think too much is going to be necessary for us whether it's sorted and then we can change the style here so we have minus picture text so we can change different style picture only so it's really helpful there's a lot of options that you can see in here okay great so that's going to be it so now that's a good start for us we're going to be building out this user form here all we need is the name to start building it out so that's it so now we've got a user form here called user form one what we can do is we can change the name of our user form we call it orders tree view so we can call this uh, inside our caption here we're going to change this to tree view orders okay very good so that's going to change it up here at the top all right so now that we have our order form we're going to go into that brand new module training tree view and this is where we're going to start writing our code the first thing what we want to do is we want to create a button that's actually going to display our tree view so that's important so we're going to call this uh, sub let's call it show training tree view okay and all we're going to be doing is taking that form now that form we created called orders tree view dot and then we just want to show it okay so that's all we really need to do now inside here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to assign the macro now this button here that i've created and so right click here just the entire group here and then we'll click assign macro and we're going to type in show training tree view so we're going to click okay all right so when i click there what's going to do is going to launch this 
there's nothing here, which is correct. It launches the form. That's all I want for now. Okay, very good. So we see that that part works. Okay, so we know that it's launching. Now what I would like to do is I would like to write some information about this. And what do I really want? Now I want that first level of node. What's going to be on that main level? Well, what I would like to do is I would like to pull from our orders list. If we take a look inside our orders here, we got our orders, but I want to know all the unique customers for that order. All of that data comes from here. It's called our order list. So inside we have the order, we have the type, whether it's a purchase invoice or whether it's a work order. We have the customer supplier. We'll just call them customers for this point. It's a little bit easier. The order date, the status, the account. So none of the other information. But what I really want to do is I want a unique list of all of the customers for this because I want that list to start out with that top level node to be all of the unique level customers for that. So how do we do that? So the first thing we're going to do is write a macro to get that unique list. So I'm going to build that top level nodes of all of those customers. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a macro that's going to build that unique list of customers. It's going to put them here, all those unique customers. And I want them to be that first level. And let's go ahead and do that now. So we've got inside the VBA here, we're going to go into that brand new module that we created here, which is called training tree view. We only have one macro. So we're going to create another macro and I'm going to call this sub create, let's just to generate, generate view. Okay, so in there we're going to need some variables. So we're going to dimension some variables and we can park this down here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we need some long variables. So we're going to dimension the order row as long, the last row as we go through the data as long the last result row we're going to need that for our advanced filter for our customers as long and also the customer row as long we need to loop through those customers getting all the names i also wanted to mention the order type especially when we use filters we're going to need that order type as a string variable so, okay so now that we have that we also want to know the customer name as a string and also the order id that could be a string as well as string Okay, next up, I also want to know the order sheet, dimension the order sheet. Let's do order sheet as a worksheet. So it's going to be work sheet. And that should be it. That's going to be it for now of all of our variables. So the first thing what we want to do is let's set that worksheet. So the set our order sheet is going to be equal to this workbook dot sheets. We're going to be working a lot with this and that's going to be our order list that's that list of orders we just went over okay so now we're going to focus on that we can do with order sheet or we can do with either way order database so both are the same right so if we take a look inside here we have our orders database you see we our order database is our code name our order list is our sheet name so we have both both are okay so order sheet since we've already defined it and we can put the period and we see that there's an intellisense popping up so we know we've got the name right First, I want to know the last row of that sheet. And let's drop this down. We don't need this much. We can look at the sheet behind it. And this is the sheet that I want. So we're just going to focus on that last row. And I need to get that last row. And it's going to be 47, the last row. We're going to use column A because A is our order number. And that's required. Order number and order ID are the same. So we're going to equals XLR. That's my shortcut, my little shortcut using auto hotkey. So that's going to get us our last row, last row row of data okay now if for some reason that last row is less than four if the last row is less than four then exit sub meaning we have no data no data nothing to do we can move on okay so what i want to do is i also want to clear our form so we take a look at that orders tree view this is the one we've created keep in mind that you might see this one orders form this is the sample one that we were just working on orders tree view is the one we're going to focus on with that form i want to make sure that we clear all the existing nodes so that means whatever data was inside that tree view we want to clear out so to do that we're going to select the form orders i should have chosen a smaller name tree view dot and we said so we know it's correct the form and then we have tree view two that's the one we used and i want to clear it so we're just going to use clear and that's going to clear all of we can do nodes sorry dot nodes clear so it's going to clear all the existing data from that clear all existing data it's called nodes from tree view okay great so now that we've cleared all that out we also want to make sure that we get our unique customers our unique customers are very important 
And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to first delete any criteria. When I get that unique list of customers, there are no criteria. I don't want to filter those customers. I simply want a unique name. However, if there's a criteria on the sheet, if we go to name manager and we look at something called criteria on the worksheet, I think order list, we might have a criteria. There's no criteria on this sheet There's that's on other sheets, but if for some reason there is, like this has a criteria, we want to make sure that we're going to delete that. So the first thing we do, anytime we run an advanced filter where there is no criteria, we delete the criteria. So to do that, in case it doesn't exist, it could create an error. So we're going to do dot names criteria dot delete. Okay, that's good. And then on error, go to zero, that'll cover. So back up to clearing out those errors. Now what we want to do is I want to run that advanced filter. I'll make it quicker a little bit later on, but I want to do application screen updating false. I'm just going to put a note in here so we can turn it on application dot screen updating equals false. Now, the reason I don't want this active quite yet, if there's bugs, I don't want that screen updating turned off until everything is working correctly. And another thing we can do is we can do application dot calculation. We'll do calculation all the way down here equals XL manual make sure we turn it back to automatic now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to comment these two out i don't want them enabled just yet we can comment them out just like this and that means they're going to be ignored until i uncomment them out okay so once i have that now we're ready to run that advanced filter and to run that advanced filter i can use my auto hotkey it'll make things a little quicker and what we'll do is we're going to fill in now we're really just focused on customers that's all i want is to use simply a unique list of customers we're only focused on column C and it's going to start out at C3 and go all the way to the last row. That is the only thing we're focused on C3 through C and the last row. There's going to be no criteria. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and clear it out. And we want those results coming in one single location. I want those results coming directly in column W. So W2 is where we're going to have those results come. So I can clear this out W2. Okay. What we're going to do is we can run that right now. And we see that we've got a unique list. Let me just delete that so you saw it as real quick, right? So I've deleted that data. We're going to run the macro using this play button or F5. And we've got our unique list of customers. Perfect. Now what we want to do is I want to determine what is the last row of that customer. In this case, it's 14. But what I want to do is I want a variable for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write last result row is equal to what? Equal to, we're going to use column W. So W here is our last results row. If for some reason the last results row, although it shouldn't be less than three, then we have no customers. We can exit the sub. So if the last result row is less than three, then go to no customer or no data. We can put no data is fine. And what that's going to do all the way down at the bottom here, no data is going to skip. And the reason I want that is because when I turn, let's put a colon there, not a semicolon. And the reason is because when I put on application screen updating equals true and calculation equals automatic, I want that until then. So I'm just going to uncomment that out. And then we're going to change this to true. That means before the macro ends, we must make sure that calculations are set back to automatic and screen updating is turned on to true. Okay, great. So that means if for any reason we need to get out of the macro, it's going to go down here and then it's going to complete screen updating. Then it's going to do this. Okay, great. So now we've got our customer list. So now what I really want to do is we've got our last results row and we know we've got our customer row. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to loop through these customers and I'm going to add them to our tree view. So to do that, we can run a loop for the customer row. We've already got that defined as long equals three to the last result row. And we wanna make sure we close our loop. Next customer row. Okay, so inside this loop, it's relatively easy. What we want to do is we are going to focus on our tree view. So with our form here, what's the form name? Is orders training tree view here, that brand new form. Focusing on that orders tree view, making sure the intelligence popped up. Which one are we focused on? I'm going to focus on the tree view too. That's it. With that, I want to focus on nodes. We're creating nodes. Those are those names that we created. And then we have different levels. So nodes, we're just going to focus on that. Once I have that, what we want to do is we want to close it with end with and with. Okay. I want to add a node. So we're going to use add. We see IntelliSense add. Now, what do we want to add? We see we've got different information. We've got a relative. Is it a parent? 
What is the relationship to them? Is it a child or is it a parent? What is the key? The key means it's a unique value. What is the text? What text are we going to show? Are we going to show the image or the selected image? So we want to put it inside just the necessary information at this point. So we're going to use add. Now, when we add that, the first thing we want to do is we'll set a key. We can do it in any order if we put the titles up. If we use the titles, I can do it in any order. So I'm going to use that key is going to be equal to now what is that unique key in this case we can use whatever's located in w because our customer names are unique we can use that so where's our customer located now we're inside another with so i need to call out the sheet name again so what is that sheet name that we need to call out it's order sheet so we're going to go order sheet dot range what is the range w and the customer row dot value that is our key Okay, what else do we want to set? I also want to set the text. What do I want to display? Text colon is equal to, we don't need the names, but if we put the names, we can put it in any order, is exactly the same. So the text and the key are exactly the same. I just need to copy that and I need to put it in here. Okay, so all this is going to do is going to add a customer. Okay, very good. So let's take a look. So what I'd like to do is I would like to just put this right at the bottom, this macro that I created, and I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to put it right here. So first thing we're going to show the form, then we're going to generate the tree view and see how that looks. Okay, very good. Let's go back to the orders and take a look. Clicking on the order lookup, we see that we now have a unique list of customers. Perfect. Doesn't look like much now, but we certainly need to add more to that. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and as you saw in the sample, for each individual customer, I want work orders, invoices, and purchases as separate children under that so that I can separate them. Let's just take a quick look at the sample as we saw it. I've got it here. Let's take a quick look here. Inside our sample, we're going to focus on the pictures after, but I want work orders, invoices, and purchasers. So I want that next as a child under these individual customers. So how do we do that? We're going to write that up right now. So let's go back into our macro here, and we're going to still focus on our nodes. So now we've already added our customer. We're going to continue on with that. And we want to describe that relationship adding that child in so we're going to add a brand new child in okay. this time we're going to describe the relative who is that relative and how do we describe it so it's going to be equals to well here's the relative and that's the parent and then we describe the child so here's the parent then we want to say what is the relationship between these two relationship equals and what we can do is we can right click list the properties and methods and we want to looking at the tvw child Okay, so that's the relationship to it. Then I want to know the key. What is that unique key that's going to be? Now, I need something very unique for that. So how do I describe that? I guess it would be the parent and the child together to create that brand new unique key. We can't just use work order or whatever it is. I need a, the relationship between the two of them because the, we know that the customer is unique. So I'm going to copy that. Here we're going to say the key is equal to the customer and we can use a combination dash call it work orders and that's sufficient so it's unique so we understand the key then simply the text say the text is going to be called work order so we just need to type in work orders and that's sufficient for us so text colon equals work orders now what we're going to do is we're going to run that code real quick and see where we are and then we can update the rest for the invoices so what i'm going to do is i'm going to save our work here and then we're going to go back. Okay, so we're going to assign this. We want that assigned to that show tree view macro. So we're going to click on assign macro. We're just going to scroll down here to show tree view. We're going to look up right here. This is the one we want show training tree view clicking. Okay, now that macro, which is right here, I want to show this form. So when we show that form, then I also want to generate tree view. Now, the best place to put this is we're going to move this over here. And I want it when that form initializes. I mean, as soon as that form shows up, that's what I want. So let's take a look inside the orders tree view. We're going to click view code. There's going to be nothing here there. We're going to click on this user form and when I want that user form to initialize. So that's the one that I want to focus on or activate. Clicking activate and then I'm going to put that in here. So that means as soon as the form activates, we're going to run that macro. OK, so we're going to take a look at it now. We're going to click on it and we see that if we click on it. We have the work order showing up. Great. But I 
really would like these automatically to show up when I click. I want to see those plus and minuses. So how can we show those? Well, we can do it either through code or through the design phase. So we can go in here and let's take a look at that. I would really like to show those expansion pluses. So we're going to look inside our orders tree view here. And we've got the tree view here. We can go into the property section by clicking on the properties here. We're going to set this to TVW root lines. And that's what I want. I want to show those. So now what we do is when we run this, we see that automatically we now have the pluses. Okay, great. And I'd also like to be able to select on the sales and have this form open at the same time. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to close this out. I'm going to go into our form here and right where it says I'm going to select on the form and we scroll down here where we see show models down here and I'm going to set this to false. Okay. Now, when we run this, we also can select on the cells too, which is nice. So we can have both open at the same time, which we may want. Okay. So now that we have the work orders open, I can close this out. And now what I'm going to do is go back into our code and I'm going to copy this one, the one that we just created for work orders. And I'm going to duplicate that for both our invoices and our purchase. So I'm going to paste that once and paste that twice. Then we're going to customize it. Now the parent will stay the same. It's going to be that customer. The relationship still the child. The key is going to change though. Instead of customer slash work orders, this is going to be customer slash purchases. Purchases. And this one is also going to be the text again. We're going to change to purchases. And also we're going to change this to invoices. Invoices and as well as this to invoices. Okay, so we now have our children, which is a static for those purchases, for those work orders. So let's take a look at that to make sure that everything looks correct. So now when we select XYZ, we have work orders, we have purchases and invoices for every customer. We're going to get to the pictures shortly on that. Why don't we do that now? I want pictures to show up before those. So that's very, very cool. How can we do that? So let's close that out and we'll put some pictures. Now I've got some pictures here that are going to help us. What I've done here with these three pictures to save us a little time is I've inserted some pictures. These are active X components. And if we're to go in the developer and we're going to go inside our insert here, we see active X controls. What I want to do is I want to insert the picture image. So it's going to use a JPEG image and make it about yay so high. And I want to insert a picture for that. So to do that, we also need to go to the developers, make sure design mode is selected. Click on the properties here. And I'll bring that over here and we want to select a picture for that. So right here in the picture, we can then browse for a picture. Now I've got a few of them saved here inside our tree view and I'll make sure to include these for Patreon here. If we look in our icons, I've got them for purchases, work order and invoice. So we can select on them, click open. Now what you see here is we've got a picture. Now I've just changed that to clip and I've changed it to either zoom or stretch and that's sufficient enough. And I've given it a name. So this is called image. This is called invoice. If we see here, I've given a name. This is called work order. And this one is called purchases. So all I've done is just create these three and given them unique names and we can remove this. Now we don't need this one. So you see how I was able to create them, giving them unique names again, invoice, work order and purchase, very unique names. So having these three, what we want to do is we want to be able to reference these pictures. It's very important. And to do that, we need to make sure we generate an image list first. So let me show you how we can do that. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to go inside this form here, that brand new form that we created here called orders tree view. We're going to view the code in here. Now we just have one code here, but we want an additional. I want to generate those images and make sure to save them inside the form so that they can be used. And so we can write a small macro that's going to help us do it. Okay. So I'm just going to use this private sub. We're going to call this setting images. Okay, so with that setting images, we're also going to want to make sure that we run this macro before we generate the tree view. So I'm going to put that right here. So setting images must be done before. To do that, we're going to dimension the my image list as new image list. So as new image list. So this is the image list we want. Okay, that's where that property is coming for that image list in case you need it, although it's not selected for me. So we're going to essentially build this list of images. So with my image list dot list images. So that's the one I want to focus on listing images. Just going to build the list and let it know which pictures we want to use. We're going to mention the image number as long. And we want to set that image number, that initial image number to one. So number equals one. 
Okay, we want to add a key to that. So the first thing we want to do, the key, again, making sure that it is unique, is equal to invoices. Okay, so we're going to set it to invoices. And then what is that picture? Where can we find that picture? So this is the name, invoices, and the key. What we want to do is where can it find it? What is that location? So we do this picture equals, so in our orders database, order database, and what is it? Invoice, here it is, dot picture. So you see how this name, invoice, is the same name that we gave it, that picture. So now all we need to do is do the same thing for each one. We're simply building up this list of images. We're going to add another one. Again, this key, again, making sure it's unique, is going to equal to work order. Die in the picture is going to be equal to, again, order database. We're just going to look for that work order. So we created that already, work order right here dot picture so we're just basically doing that for each one of them again last one here for our purchases key is going to be equal to purchases you just have to make sure it's unique purchases then we want to add that picture you can imagine equals order database dot this one's purchases dot picture okay so we've built the list of pictures so we've done that and we can end with now what we want to do is we want to focus on that tree view level right that tree view that we created so with tree view two we want to make sure we got it right that's correct tree view two we want to set that images so we're going to set that image list equal to my image list okay so now that we've got that i want to make sure that we're giving an identification so that identification is going to be equal to one and i want that label edit equals you're going to use the manual we'll do the manual and lastly i want to whether we're going to hide it we don't want to hide it so hide selection is going to equal to false so we don't want to hide it okay so what that's going to do is basically going to let us know exactly where to find those images because it's got to find them i think go too many end with so that should be sufficient okay so we're going to save work and we want to make sure that we set these images before before we generate the tree view. The tree view cannot find those images until we've told it exactly where to find these three images. So good, now we've got that covered. Now we can continue on and focus how we get those images to be able to be viewed inside. And so now all we need to call out is invoices, work orders, or purchases as images. So let's take a look back inside that macro and make sure that we define them. So we're gonna go back into our training tree view here and we've already set the information. We already have the words, but now all I want to do is add the images. So we can just do it right here. Comma, we're just going to add the image here. It's going to be image colon equals, then what is the name? Work orders. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go back. I just want to double check inside the brand one we just created, the training orders tree view here. Viewing the code, I want to make sure that this says work orders. It's got to be plural. We want to make sure that the invoices, work orders are all the same. Now what we can do is we can run our code. Let's take a look at the picture here. And we've got our picture showing up. Now all we need to do is the same thing for the purchases and the invoices. Notice it's showing up perfect. Okay, I like the way that that's looking. Now we're just going to go back into our code and we're going to update that image. So we can just copy and paste this image onto the each one. And then we're going to change the text accordingly. So we're going to paste it here and here. This one's going to be purchases. We just need to update that purchases. And then we'll double check. And lastly, we want invoices. Okay, continuing on, let's take a look at that. Running our code to make sure that it works. Okay, that looks really nice. Okay, I like the way that that's looking. And now what we want to do is when I click on work orders, I want to know all of the work orders associated with this customer, all the purchases or invoices associated. So we want to build out the children for these individual work orders or invoices or purchases for the identified customer. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's gonna continue on with our code and build out those children. So we can continue down here. Now we've already built out all the customers and all the work orders, so we're good with that. Now what we wanna do is I wanna loop again through the original data. We've already defined the last row of data. We already have it here. So now what we wanna do is create another for next loop. For, call it order row, let's just do order row, it's equal to four to the last row. And then our next order row. Make sure we close our loop. And basically, the first thing I want to do is I want to loop through all this order. I want to grab the order number, the order type, and I want to know the customer supplier. I want all that information for each one. So we're going to go all the way to 47. All right, so let's go ahead and start our loop. I want to set the order type. The order type is going to equal to, you see how we have the order type in capitals? I really don't want it in capital letters. So what I want to do is I want to use something like proper. So what I mean is like this, equals proper 
and then invoice. So I really would like to have it look like this. So we see we have proper, so we could do that for all of them. That's kind of what I want here. So how do I do that inside VBA? Well, we can use application worksheet function to do that because I want just the proper name. So we're going to use application dot worksheet function proper. That's what I want. What we want is range. Where's that order type coming from? Column B and the order row dot value. Okay closing our loop and i also would like to add an s to it s because i want work orders invoices so i want something like that to show up that's going to be an insider order type so we're going to add the s and that's going to be called the order type obviously okay next up what else do i want to happen i also want to grab the order id so we're going to get that order id here we'll do customer name is going to be equal to and then we know what the customer name is going to be in column c so we just need to copy this and change it to C and that is our customer name next up I also want the order ID so the order ID is going to be equal to whatever's in a so let's change this to a so we've captured them all there this is our order ID okay now that we have that we can start building our children let's continue on we want to take the attention back to our form so with our order form what is our orders tree view dot we want to focus on that tree view too. That's the one. And again, I want to focus on those nodes. So we're going to do nodes, right? We're adding nodes. So we want to focus on that. First, we're going to add it. And what are we going to add? I'm going to add that brand new node here. It's going to be setting our relative. Relative. I want to make sure it's exactly the customer name. So relative colon equals our customer name that's very important that we get exactly the same remember we have this key this is what we're looking for oh it's not w but it's going to be our customer name because that's exactly how we know the exact parent actually it's the key right we want to match this customer name plus work orders or purchases or invoices very important so it's going to be the customer name dash and our order type that's the unique since we set this unique key we need to make sure that that is the exact parent so it's the customer name and the dash and what else and the order type order type notice that we've added the s on here it's also here here and here so we have the s it's plural in each condition so we want to do that so we have the order type once we know the order type what else do we need we need to add the relationship and once again it's going to be the child so we're going to put the relationship equals the child again tvw child that's the same as we had before making sure next up what i want to do i want to put in a key i want to put in a unique key just for this order so what would it be we are going to add in the word order key is going to equal order and the order id so we'll put in the order id order id so that's going to be the unique key for just that one but i also want to put in the text and so at this point what do i want the text well i want it to be something like invoice number or work order number or purchase number so i want to use the order type but the order type ends in an s so how do we remove that so what we're going to do is we're going to just going to take the left of it and i'm going to remove the last character so i'm going to use the left of the order type here and i want the length of the order type then i want to remove the last character minus one so that's just going to remove that s so that's going to be like invoice work order or purchase so that we have that that's the key so then i want to add the number and let's see space number sign and what else the order id so we're going to do and order id so basically it's going to say invoice space number and then the actual invoice number so it's going to be add order okay it's kind of a long line but that's it that's all we need to do we just need to add the text in here text label important text equals okay and the and sign here okay that's looking good now that we have everything set up what we can do is we can save our work and let's go run our code and see what we have so far so it's going to be adding those so we're going to take a look running our code here so we're going to look on let's say uh, john james work orders purchase he's got a purchase number two purchases wow that looks pretty good okay i like the way that that's looking we see that we've got everything kind of really nicely organized here okay very good let's add some check boxes to our form so we're going to close this out and we're going to go up in here and we're going to pull up this orders tree view and i'm just going to bring this down i want to put a check boxes to be able to show the check boxes are not in the form so how are we going to do that well what i'm going to do is i'm going to enter a check box here and i'm just going to put it right here and i want to change the font on this so we're going to go back into the properties here and we're going to go into the font 
and I'll just set them to 10, clicking OK. OK, now what I would like, instead of checkbox 1, we're going to have enable checkboxes. So the caption is going to be enable checkboxes. OK, and we're just going to call this checkboxes. That's fine. And so when it's selected, I want to make sure that checkboxes are enabled for them. So when we double click, it's going to bring us to the checkboxes. So here we can write some code. If me dot checkboxes, that's the name, dot value equals true, meaning it's currently true, then what do we want to do? Then I want to do something, meaning that the checkbox has been selected. In that case, I want to show the checkboxes for our tree view. So me is our form, tree view two dot checkboxes equals true, very simple. Else me dot tree view two dot checkboxes equal false. Okay, very, very simple. So now what we need to do is just clean it up a little bit and see how we did. We can click here and click here. Okay, so now we've got enable checkboxes. Okay, I like that way. So now it's enable checkbox. I think our icons are a little bit too big, but I think it's fine. Perfect. So we see now that we can enable or disable checkboxes perfectly. Cool. What else I'd like to do is when I make a selection, as we saw in the sample, when I make a selection on any purchases or invoice or whatever, I want to have that show up on the right side. I also want to add some filters. So let's build this form out a little bit more to add those additional features. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into preview form and we're going to add some additional functions. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to add a print button. So to do that, we're simply clicking on this button right here, command button here, and we'll just print selected. So I'm going to change the font on this. So we're going to go into the properties here and we're going to go into the font here and I'm just going to change it a little bit to the bigger font so we can see it better. 10, click OK. And then what we're going to do is change this to print selected orders. OK, very nice. So we can expand it a little bit so we catch all of that. And I also want to give this form a bit of a better look and feel. So I'm going to select on the form here and we're going to go into the picture. Now I've got a picture, a JPEG picture saved already for this form. That's going to help us. And I'm just going to select here. Of course, if you want these backgrounds and the icons, I'll make sure they're available on Patreon. OK, so obviously we don't want it centered here. So we certainly need to adjust the picture and we're going to just put in center. Center is fine, but here in the clip mode, I do want to update it to stretch. OK, I like that. Continuing on, I'm going to make this transparent. So the enable checkboxes, this opaque, we're going to double click. It's going to become transparent. I also want to set the color to this or we can change it to transparent also. OK, that looks nice. So now we've got a function. We can print the selected work orders. And I also want to add a picture feature here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here and I'm going to add a picture here. This picture is going to be our sample for our invoices. And we're going to make sure that that's big enough. So I'm just going to bring it up here and we want to make sure it looks nice. OK, I think that's going to be about the right size. We can make the adjustments later. And again, inside this, we can change the background here. Instead of opaque, we can change it to transparent and the borders. We can keep it on for now. OK, so this is going to be called our order pick. We'll call this order pick. And VBA is going to put the order picture in there. Now I've got a macro that's going to turn those. That way we don't have to write. But I'm going to show you this macro. It's going to take our orders and turn them into pictures. It's going to be very cool. So we're going to take that picture and we're going to put it directly in here. The idea is when you select an order, that picture goes in here. So how are we going to make that happen? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we take an order and we create a picture from it. I didn't create a button for it, but I should do that now. So here we have any order that we want. Now we want to create a picture for it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this control D and it's going to duplicate that. And then we're going to put it down here and then I'm just going to put it uh, create picture, create picture. OK, or just pick. PICT. Okay, and now we'll put a little icon insert. Let's locate an icon. I'll just do icon. Any picture is okay. So we want to create an icon and then we'll look for it and see this is kind of good. Either one of these. This is good. I like the camera tool here. Click insert because that's exactly what we're doing. And I'm going to change the format here. Graphics fill. It's going to go to white. Okay, so now we're going to bring this down here. Now keep in mind that these are all grouped together and so we'll have to regroup and ungroup them. Create picture. OK, cool. I like that. Notice how they're all grouped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup them. I'm going to hold down my control 
and I'm going to select this as well, and I'm going to regroup them. When I do regroup them, whoops, Control-Z, I need to regroup them, which is this one right here. Okay, so now Control-1, I want to make sure that they're not going to size or anything, so I want to move but don't size with cells. Okay, so I've got a macro here, and the idea is this. When I select this, I want to create a picture, and I want to save that picture somewhere on my computer. I have a place already put here. Now, all of this is from a previous training, but this one was added. So our order pictures are going to go in this file. You can browse for it, and you can select whatever folder you want your pictures. So I've got them right here in one of my folders here, right here. Lots of free trainings here. Okay, so I've got them here in my order pictures. So I've got them already here. So that's the folder I'm using, order pictures. Of course, you're going to browse for your own. So once they're trained, that way we know where to pull them up. So how do we do that? Now, this macro I've already got saved, and we're going to sign it up. Let's take a look inside the macro here it's inside the orders so orders macros obviously we're not going over this I went over this in the original but I do want to look at this create order picture oh this was kind of cool this macro would create for all of them I created a macro that could create images for all of them we'll go over that in a second create order picture this is the macro that I'll go over with you now and we're going to assign that so what I'm going to do is go back into the orders and I'll show you how it works I'm going to hold down the control here from both of these and I'm going to right click and I'm going to assign that macro to this button here. Click OK. So when I do that, when I click this button, it's going to take a picture of this invoice and it's going to save it inside that folder. So we can see that it's going to take a moment. It's going to create it automatically. We can also make this a lot faster, but I just kind of did it quite fast. OK, it's done automatically. And if we want to look at it, of course we can. Let's take a look inside the folder. And here's the folder and here's just what got created. So basically it's a picture of it. So here's the invoice. Let's bring it up a little bit so you can see it here. Okay, so here's the picture that I just created. Now, it is this picture that I want to save. So let's see first how we created this picture and we saved it in that folder. Now, here's the folder where we want all of our order pictures to go into. So continuing on, let's go back in that macro called Create Order Pictures and see how this works. I'm going to create a temporary chart as a chart, order sheet as a worksheet, temporary shape, which we'll be deleting, and the file name as a string. We're going to set the order sheet to our orders. That's obviously the sheet that we're going to take it from. This is our order sheet here. When we have that sheet, I want to make sure that that sheet is active. And I want to set that range. Not only set it, but I want to select it. That range is going to be J5 all the way down right here to N53. So that entire range I want to select, J5 and we're going to select it and then I want to copy that and I want to paste it as a picture so to do that we're going to do dot pictures already in the orders paste dot name we're give it a very specific name creating a brand new picture based on that name so what does that look like well I'm going to run that up until that point and we're going to see exactly what that looks like it takes just a moment okay let's take a look back in the sheet so now you see that I've got a picture here it took an entire picture of that we've got this picture it's called temporary picture now keep in mind that these are very large in size if you want to create these and you want to make sure to delete it for some reason Excel the size goes to like 100 megabytes for one picture don't ask me why but it just does okay so we've created this picture now that we have it on it what do we want to do with that we're going to set the temporary shape equal to that picture. So we're defining that. This is a shape. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a chart. I want to create a brand new chart under this name called temporary chart. Let's continue on with our code. The reason we want to do that is we create this brand new chart on this sheet. Then what I want to do is I want to clear all the chart data out. And I want to paste in. The only way we can actually save a picture on our computer is take that picture that we just took it, save it as a background of this chart, then save it as a JPEG. So that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lines of code. So now we're going to clear it. So when I use F8 and move on one step, you're going to see that that chart now it's clear, right? All that data we don't need in that chart. Next up, we want to set the location. That's going to be the locations object and the name as the sheet name. So we're going to set that temporary chart. Then what we want to do is we want to make sure that the chart width is exactly the same as the picture we took and the height is exactly the same. So we're setting this chart here. So here's the chart here that we just created and here's the picture. So we have a picture and we have a chart. So both of those, here's our chart. How do we know it's a chart? It's called chart one. So notice it's the same size as the picture. Okay, continuing on. Again, I want to select some other cell. I want to copy that picture. Let's continue on. I want to copy that and I want to paste it into the chart area. So first we need to select the chart, then we paste it into the chart. And so now let's take a look at this chart. So we see that we have the chart 
and we have the picture inside. So it's this chart one, but they're together now. So now what we do is we take this entire chart and we save it as a picture. Then we delete the picture, then we delete the chart. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna set the file name, the order picture file. Now, how do we get this order number? If we look in our admin and I take a look right here, it's called order pick folder. So I'm gonna take that in brackets and I wanna add a backslash and I wanna give it a unique name. So the backslash plus order and the order number. That order number is located in B3, that's our order sheet. And I wanna give it .jpg. So this is the entire file name. Okay, so we don't need this and we don't need this. So now all we need to do in a single line of code is export that file name. We're exporting it as a JPEG and we're gonna export it right here into the file name. And as I step through, then we just need to activate here the cell. We can get rid of that just because I'm not on the class and move it over. So that's it, that's all we need to do. Very, very simple. And that creates that picture and puts it on our file. So now what we wanna do is I wanna take that picture and I wanna fill it into our user form. So you see that space inside our user form? Going back in here in order to look up, I wanna put that inside this space. I wanna locate that picture in that folder and place it inside there as soon as a user selects on a purchase. But the important thing is, if they select on this, I wanna make sure that we know that it's order number two and we put that picture there. Now we know inside our folder that we have order two and we know we can find it. So let's do that now, let's write that macro. When they make a selection, that's what I want it to happen. Okay, so here inside our user form here is where we're gonna make that selection. If we take a look in here, when a user clicks on any one of these, that's when I want something to happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the code inside this and we're gonna take a look. Now it's gonna be a selecting on that in the tree view. When the user clicks on it, that's when we want something to happen. Tree view to click. We're gonna to have to find some information. We can get rid of that. We don't need that. We're gonna write our code here. So first we're gonna dimension the selected item as a string. I need to know what we've selected. Next up, I also wanna know the picture path as a string. I'll need that full picture path in order to display it. That selected item's gonna be equal to me the form here. What is the form? Tree view to dot selected item dot text. So the text of that. How do we know what that is? Message box selected item. I want to know it. Okay, so let's take a look at what that might be as we run the form. So we're going to select here and I want that message box to show up. If I select here, it's going to be uh, John James. Okay, perfect. If I select here, it's going to show work orders. And if I select here, let's do something else and then purchase here. So really what I want to focus on is just only those selections. So we need to isolate only those that contain purchases, work orders, or invoices. So those are the really ones I want to focus on. So we want to make sure that it contains the number sign. In other words, if it contains the number sign, we're interested in it. If it doesn't, we're not interested in that. So that's what I need to isolate, and that's what we're going to do. So let me go ahead and write that up. So we see how it's working fine. Okay, if in string, we're gonna use in string because I wanna look at that pound, selected item, comma, contains the pound, let's do the pound sign here if I can find it, is greater than zero, then do something, right? Only in those cases. So now, if we do message box select item, when we select anything else, nothing's going to happen. So let's take a look, click on here, and we select on here, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Here, something happens, perfect. Okay, so only when we select on orders do we want something to happen. Okay, now we can continue with our code. Uh, also, we want to get the picture path. So what is that picture path? That picture path is equal to, remember it's the order folder, order pick folder. That's the name of the folder where our pictures are stored. And I want the backslash here. And also, what else do I need? I need the item so that and me.treeview to dot selected item key. What is the key? That's very important. I'll show you once again in case we forgot it because we probably did. And the jpg dot jpg. So what we want to do is we're going to take a look inside those orders. Inside the folder, it's called order two, order three, order four. So we have that. However, what is the name of the key? We've given them a name of the key. Let's look back inside our macro to see what we call that key. Going back in the training tree view here, the key is 
order and the order ID. We've assigned it, so it's very helpful. So we see that it's very easy, order and the order ID, and all we need to do is add .jpg, and we have the full file path based on this. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We've completed the full file path just by adding that in. So we can close that out and we can continue on. So the picture path is equal to the folder plus a backslash plus the key, which is order two, order one, order three, and JPG. So now we've got the full picture path. I do wanna make sure that it is an accurate picture path if the directory of the picture path, VB directory, in this case, does not equal empty, then what I wanna do, me dot order picture, that's what we want, dot picture, we're gonna insert that picture, equals, we're gonna load the picture, load picture, and then picture, path that's all we need to do so again we're checking to make sure it's accurate as long as it is then emmy order picture i probably should wrap this on on air resume next on air go to zero i just want to double check that to see if it creates an error when there's no picture involved but i think it should be fine okay next up we're going to save our work and let's take a look and see how we've done and we probably need to stretch out that picture properly so let's click on here and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on any individual order, load picture. Oops, spelled that wrong. L-O-A-D. Okay, very good. We'll add some error checking in here in case there's any incorrect selection. And then on our go to zero. Okay, well, let's go ahead and check that out. Now we'll click on the order lookup here. And then purchases. Okay, it's showing up, but we do need to set the image. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so we'll need to make sure the image is stretched. That's an easy one. Let's go ahead and go back into our user form here inside our orders tree view form here. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on the properties. And I'm going to, in this case, the mode here, we'll set that to stretch. So we want to actually probably zoom or stretch. Let's see which one works better. Okay, we'll minimize that. Click on the order lookup again. We'll select a purchase order. And I think that looks pretty good. That's exactly the way I want it. Okay, so nice. So you see how it's now pulling up the information here just as we wanted. And it's pulling up those pictures. Very, very nice. Okay, what I'd also like to do now is, again, print the selected work orders. So how are we going to do that? Well, of course, we'll need to enable checkboxes. And then for anyone that we want to, whether it's an invoice, I want to click this button and have them print all of those that are selected. So that way I can show you how we can loop through specific items and then take action accordingly. Okay, great. So let's take a look at that back inside. And we're going to put that directly inside the module that we've been working on here, which is our training tree view here. Okay, so we've got the generate tree view. And we're going to go down here so we can close this out for now. I'm going to clear out additional spaces that we don't need. Scrolling down here, creating a brand new subroutine called sub print selected orders. It could be any type of order. Inside that, what we're going to do is we're going to dimension the order count as long i need to know how many are there because i'm going to loop through all the orders i also wanted to mention the order id that's very important because i need to load that specific order and then print it as a string next up one to mention the node as a node we'll need to extract information from that node okay scrolling up now we're going to focus on the order screen with the form that we're doing which is our orders tree view orders tree view that's the form we're going to for orders and make sure i spelled it right tree view Okay, now that it's spelled right, I want to make sure that the checkboxes are enabled. So if dot checkboxes dot value equals false, that means the checkboxes are not selected. So we need to enable checkboxes in order to select it. Then do something, right? Let the user know. Message box, please make sure to select the enable checkboxes. Then select those orders to be printed. Okay, I like that. We're going to exit the sub, right? Nothing we can do unless they've already checked some items. Okay, continuing on, I want to count the number of orders. We're going to use a for each loop because I want to loop through all of the nodes and I want to check to see which ones are checked. And of course, it's only those nodes containing the number. So for each node in and then dot tree view to dot node. So we're going to loop through every single node. Closing our loop, next node okay so once we've closed our loop what i want to do is i want to run a check if in string we want to check remember we only want those nodes with the pound sign so that's very important node dot text that's the text of that comma contains that pound sign then we know we're going to continue on there we go greater than zero that means they have selected on an order invoice purchase or 
our work order. Then we need to do something. And I also want to make sure the notes check too. So not only does it need to contain a number, but it also has to be checked. And node dot checked. I want to check the checked properties equals true. It has to be checked. Then we can do something. So again, two conditions. It has to be the node has to contain the number sign and it has to be checked. Once those two properties are true, we can then set it to print. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to update the order count because we can have a message box saying how many orders were printed. It's kind of nice. Order count equals order count plus one. So we're going to increment the order count. Next up, what I'd like to do is I want to extract the order ID. Order ID, remember, we're going to extract it from the key equals replace. Now, the reason I'm using replace is because I don't want the word order. I only want the number and our key contains that. So we're going to use the node key. Remember, the node key is the order and the number. And I'm going to look for the word order and I'm going to replace it with nothing. What that's going to do is it's going to extract the order ID and that's exactly what I want. I then want to take that order. What do I want to do with it? I'm going to put it right here. Why? Because as soon as I put it in here, it's going to load that order. Whatever type of it is, it's going to automatically load. So notice how I'm putting it in. Let's pull something other than an invoice. Let's pull a purchase order. Purchase order number 10. So I'm going to put it back on invoices, but I do want to load up 10. So here, 10 is a purchase order. So we're going to load that up and I want to show you how it's going to automatically load the purchase. So now it changes the tabs. So it's going to load those purchases. So that's exactly what I want to have. Q5 is going to take on that order number. So we're going to write that in orders dot range Q5 dot value is going to equal that order ID set order ID or number. It's the same thing. Order number, order ID, same thing. Once you do that, it's automatically going to load in. Then all we need to do is run a macro called order print. Now I've already set that macro up in our original training. Let's just take a quick look at it here. Inside our order macros here, all the way at the bottom or nearly at the bottom, it's right here called order print. It's just going to print out the sheet. We've already set that. So that's all we have to do. It's just going to simply loop, relatively simple. And we're just going to loop through all the nodes. And what I'm going to do is clear any spaces here. And then we're going to assign this macro to a button. So print orders, I'm going to copy this and we've created a button. So now we're going to go back into the form itself, that orders tree view. We've got that order. I'm going to double click on that. I want to change the name. I don't necessarily like that. I'm not a big fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the properties here and we're just going to call it print button. Okay, so now that I've changed the name, when I double click on it, it's going to automatically go into the VBA and to the print. So all I need to do is just paste that in run macro to print orders. Okay, very good. So let's take a look and see how that's working. We're going to click order lookup. I'm going to select on individual orders. Let's just check to make sure that it's going to tell us that we need to enable check boxes when I do that. Mm, ambiguous name, oh, print selected order. That means I have more than one macro of the name, right? And my test orders also that. So we need to rename the macro we just created. I have two macros with the same name, which makes perfect sense. So training, so print orders two, because that's the second one. And then inside our B, making sure that it's two. Okay, so that means we just have two macros with the same name. We don't want that. Okay, very good. No problem here. And then resetting that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want it to tell us, hey, you don't have your checkboxes selected. I am not going to enable checkboxes just yet because I want to make sure it lets us know. Please make sure to enable checkboxes, then select those. Okay, perfect. So enable checkboxes. I want to print this one and let's take a look at this one here purchase. So these purchases I want to print. Okay, so that looks good. And I also want to print, let's see, one of these invoices here. Okay, very good. Now we're going to print selected work orders. It's going to go through the loop and it's going to print that one. It's going to go for the first one. So now we see that one's printed. The next one, is we continue. This is my snag. It's going to print to each one of them. Work order number five is being printed. And now we have the next one. Work order number 13 is being printed and, oh, excuse me, purchase. Oh, that's it. Okay, so they've all been printed. Very good. And I just want to add in a message box. I want to know how many were printed. So we're going to close this one out. Inside that macro here, we're going to go in this one here. And I just want a message box, message box, then our order count, and then space orders have been printed. Okay, we'll double check that to make sure that that's working. And then we can move on. Then we're going to filter them. So we're just going to check. I'll just do two orders in this case. And then we'll select on two orders, making sure that we've enabled the checkbox. And then this one and this one, print selected orders. And I want to make sure that we get it automatically printed out. And then we get a message box saying two orders have been printed. There they are. 
and let's take a look at that message box there continuing on and we see that we now have let's pull that two orders have been printed perfect so that's looking really good okay continuing on now we see that the orders are showing up nicely i would like to filter them maybe i only want to show work orders maybe i only want to show purchases so let's create a filter and we're going to update that down there okay so we're going to go back into our form here and we're going to create that filter so inside our orders tree view we're going to view that object and we've got the form here so the first thing what i would like to do is i would like to add an additional item here so continuing on we'll add this one here this frame here i don't necessarily like that color i don't see a transparent ability here which would be nice but well maybe we can match the color let's take a look and see if we can match that color which is close to about here so i'm going to use my snagit and i'm going to take a quick picture of this color here i'm going to go into my snagit let's drop that down so you guys can see what's going on how we find and match a background color which can be helpful sometimes so i'm just going to bring this up here so you can see everything that's going on and this is called snagit which is going to be helpful and i want to match that color and then what we're going to do is we're going to add that in so i'm going to take my color picker here and i always want to grab that whatever blue color here and i'm going to look down here and i see that that's off the screen here let's bring it up here there it is that color here is going to be we've got an rgb of 234 247 255 so knowing that color we can then actually bring it into that color will stay up so we're going to bring that into our user form here that's the color that i want to focus on here so we're going to look in the back color here and i'm going to use inside our palette here and i'm going to select a custom but that custom we want to right click that here and then we're going to set a color for that and the color here is that 234 247 255 so we just need to change this to 247 okay and then we want to add that color okay so now we've got a background color we want to give that frame a name so we're going to call it filter orders by type i'm going to add in some check boxes into that sorry filter for this is just a frame filter frame and we want actually the caption sorry filter orders by type okay so now that we have that in here i want to add some check boxes in here so we can select on that and i'm going to add in these check boxes and i'm going to use three of them we're going to update the font because it's a little bit small so i'll select on this and we will change that to 10 clicking ok inside i do want to give it a name so we're going to call this invoice check just call it box and then what we'll do is we'll give the caption a name include invoices i like that better and then we'll just change this name i want to make sure it's similar inc invoice and this is our caption include invoices so we also want to duplicate that so i'm going to copy that and then paste it here and this is going to be for our work orders and then this one's going to be inc work orders include instead of invoices we're going to change this to work orders and lastly purchases work orders and we'll expand this a little bit here and lastly we're going to copy and paste this that gives the user the ability to include or exclude anyone they want i think we copied it more than once let's see if we did no it looks good okay lastly what we want is our purchases so let's bring this up here and bring it down here we can give it a little more space this one's going to be purchases so our name is going to be inc purchases and then our caption is going to be include purchases now that we've named everything right and we've got filter by type i'm going to change the text on this also we want to have that as 10 here same size clicking ok okay so that looks nice and then we can save our work so now when we click on here we want that automatically to be updated so how are we going to do that well when we create the nodes basically i only want to create nodes for those that are selected so we need to run an if then so let's look back in our node creation inside the macro in our training tree view and we can do it in a few different places you notice for each of these we create work orders purchases and invoices so we only want to create these if they have been checked so we're going to run an if then statement here so if we're already inside the tree view so we need to call out the form again so we're going to call out the form here what is the form name it's called orders tree view dot include invoices let's pull this up here so we know which line we're focused on this is our work order line so we want include work orders this is our line for work orders dot value equals true then only at so basically we're only displaying this if the work orders are true so we also want to add here so i'm just going to copy this i'm going to paste it here 
and I'm going to paste it right here. So now instead of work orders, this is going to be our for our, let's select over here. We see that this is for our purchases, the second line. So dot include purchases dot value equals true. This one is going to be for invoices. So we just need that dot include invoices dot value equals true. So we're only showing everything, the words and the icon only if those are true. So we can save our work so far. And let's just take a quick look at that to see how that happens. That, that might create an error until we actually add it. So here, we also want to add an if then statement. In other words, I only want to add this order if it is available in the type, right? If we have to check for the order type. And so let's write some if then statements. Now we already have, I believe, next order down here. We have no data, but I want to create something called next order and skip to there. So and I'll show you what that means. So what we're going to do is we're going to check. We know the order type here. Here's where we create the individual order nodes. But I, before we get to that point, I want to check to make sure that we've actually selected them for the filter. So if again, we need to call out, let's pull this right up again, if orders work orders. So this is going to be for work orders. If I want to make sure if it's false, right, and the order type equals work orders then go to next order basically skipping it right because we should not include orders the checkbox is not selected the order type is work orders so we should go to the next order this should be here okay there we go so that's what should happen now we just need to copy that and paste that two more times one for invoices one for purchases and then we're going to make the update here so again, here, instead of work orders, this is going to be used for our purchases. So dot include purchases equal false and the order type equal purchases, then go to the next order. So we're simply checking purchases. And lastly, for invoices. So include invoices. I like to use the dot include invoices to make sure we got it. and the order type equals invoices, then go to next order. So now we're just checking if the checkbox is false and it's invoices, we're simply skipping to add the node, saving our work here and then let's we'll check it out. Okay, going in here. And now one more thing we want to do is we're going to need to update this node. We need to update it as soon as we click it. this. I want this to run as soon as we click any one of those checkboxes. Very important. Which checkboxes are those? Let's take a look inside our form again. We're going to go back into our user form here and then we're going to update that so we're going to view the code and when do i want it to run when any one of those check boxes include invoices include purchase orders or include work anyone when they're clicked i want to run that code same thing here for include purchases i want to run that code same thing for work orders get running that code so we're going to check to make sure we're regenerating that tree every time they select on one of those filters so let's take a look now and we'll click on it order type oops should be order type not the entire word and then here and here okay perfect continuing on nothing selected so we need to select them and actually i want to make them all true we need to make the default to true just so that we're going to have actually values here so that looks good that looks correct let's continue on i think we need or oh here it is work orders so the only thing i want to do is make the default setup so it's looking really good so notice that they're all there but let's set the default to true what automatically when the form launches because when the form launched nothing came up right there's no work orders because they're all unchecked so we don't want that so we're going to set the default inside that form so go to the tree view here selecting this holding down the control we're going to go to the properties and we're going to make sure that each one of them are true setting that value to true now when we run it it's going to see that they're true and it's going to automatically make that update so going out here and clicking on the order lookup now they're all set to true now we have data here perfect now let's say i don't want purchases i want to exclude that it's going to refresh this it's going to include only work orders and invoices which is exactly what i want wow very cool when i select on an invoice i want to make sure that picture shows up wow very very cool enabling check boxes work okay i think we got it all now i've got a lot of ideas to add to this and if you want to see more of course i'm going to be doing that on patreon and also you can find it right on our youtube for members here which is youtube members silver both of those i'll be making some updates to this just as like we do every single week go ahead and join those platforms just a few dollars a month it helps us out a lot and it gives you a ton more value a lot of features and lots of great things going on on those platforms thank you so much and we'll see you next week